South Africa is on a path towards digital transformation with the Swan University of Technology launching the second of the country's two hubs of the Artificial Intelligence Institute of South Africa in Pretoria. We know now that the adoption of artificial intelligence by a country can easily double the GDP of that country within 12 to 15 years. We have chosen to focus in the areas where we are as an institution already possessing considerable expertise, namely AI in motor industry, AI in farming and food production, AI in 4IR manufacturing, AI in tourism, AI in transport, AI in health and AI in telecommunications. Still new in the portfolio, the minister delivered a keynote address at the university. He described the hub as a solution to the country's socio-economic challenges. A lot of things are happening which should not happen. The number of people who are unemployed is far lower than required. Our Gini coefficient is unacceptable. The rate of our economic growth is not okay. Our fiscal situation, which is confronted by the debt service cost of about more than 300 billion, is facing us. More than 50 or 60 percent of young people are not at work. This is the opportunity for young people to be at work. But how we implement this is going to actually take us there or stay as a dream. The launch of the AI Hub also saw exhibitions on technologies that will form part of the center. Minister Gungubele interacted with exhibitors while he was given a demonstration of how some of the technologies will work. As part of the launch, a panel discussion was held on the value chain involving players in the automotive, manufacturing, agriculture and healthcare sectors to talk about the role of artificial intelligence. There is a fear um, from, and it was said by one of the speakers also, I think a lot of education needs to be done around it because the moment you hear a term like fourth industrial revolution, it, it does bring fear. And we had to take a lot of change management into place to actually address that fear and to make sure people understand it doesn't mean you're going to lose your work. There's a lot of fear in the process that you need to address um, to actually get to a place where you can effectively use and be of a benefit to the, um, to the institution itself. We are told that the AI has the opportunity to add more than 15% to South Africa's GDP and the economy by 2035. TUT and government believe that South Africa is on a path of digital transformation, a future reimagined with commitments coming through on ensuring that more hubs are rolled out in the near future and connected to various sectors of the economy. Katlego Lorodi, SABC News, Pretoria. And joining us now to elaborate on some of the issues raised there by the Minister and the University, Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the Tswani University of Tok Technology, Dr. Vatiswa Bapu Zamkwaka joins us. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Zamkwaka. So since uh, last or the announcement of the new broadband spectrum, how government has said that it is pivotal for a reform of driving economic growth. Can we just perhaps bring it down to an accessible level? I mean, a colleague was just uh, commenting here about how if uh, we're to look at digitization, how are we supposed to uh, feel safe when there's a fear of it taking away jobs? And I think this is what one, one of your colleagues was speaking about there, that uh, there's a need to ameliorate that fear, to look at more broadly at what digitization can do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tabuso. Uh, um, and thank you for having me um, uh, on the studio. And um, 
picking up on your comment about um, the fear and the duty that we have, you know, as universities, um, we are academic institutions that are responsible for knowledge production and also to raise awareness. So coming down to AI or artificial intelligence, um, we, we have a duty even there to ensure then that um, the public is getting educated um, about the importance of AI and the fact that it's not there to replace jobs as we correctly stated. And it is true. Um, in contrary, um, artificial intelligence is there to ensure that there is uh, efficiency in that which we do. Um, as you can see from the screens, if we are picking up healthcare, they, um, you, you saw some um, uh, wheelchairs that are, that are powered uh, by artificial intelligence. That could be of powerful use um, in our public hospitals. Um, you look at, uh, for instance, the burden of disease um, uh, that the country is faced with, it will still remain with healthcare. Um, uh, AI could be uh, very much instrumental in early detection um, of, of, of diseases. Uh, we can take uh, cancer as an example. Um, many are times when patients are diagnosed with cancer, etc. So they are already on stage four and uh, there's not much uh, that could be done. And with AI, um, there is a possibility um, and, and a, a, a bigger um, opportunity for early detection and therefore early um, therapy uh, to be given to, to, to the patients. Uh, if I may pick up that example, uh, picking up on the, um, on the exhibition that are being shown there within the healthcare. That goes also to be so for um, other sectors as well. We, um, we, we had our vice chancellor mentioning the sectors uh, in which we are employing artificial intelligence as the two institutions. Uh, take agriculture. Um, it is not really a matter of our farmers not having the, the expertise um, to be so. But um, because of the quality of the produce, which could be improved immensely, by, uh, de by deploying artificial intelligence technologies um, so that it, 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 it becomes uh, that of the world standards. Uh, we compete at a global level. So yes, the fear is there, but um, it's, it's way outweighed, um, if I may put it that way, uh, by the benefits. And uh, without shining a blind eye on the fear, we, as I said, we have uh, the responsibility. Actually, we have a duty because we're the academic institutions to ensure then that we, we, we educate the public about the use of AI and also uh, picking up on your on question about fear, the ethics around it. And any technology would come with these kind of things and we need to ensure then that we address them, and especially as, 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 as academic institutions. Mm. Uh, we make sure that there's responsibility in the way in which they are implemented. Uh, there is no violation of ethics in any way. And um, lastly, uh, in contrary, artificial intelligence is here to, uh, to allow us to have more jobs, to create more jobs than to take jobs, because but, now we are expanding the scope. So how, how would we do that? Because um, I, I would like to look at what has been the criticism over South Africa's slow digital migration. Uh, some observers have said it's as a result of policy uncertainty. So if we're saying that we're going to use uh, things like artificial intelligence, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality to improve things like inequality, poverty, uh, unemployment. I, I mean, f for some of us, it's not things that we can really understand. So how do we bring it down to a level for those who need it the most, be able to identify uh, the benefits to them, particularly those who actually don't even have access to digitization. Digitization, we're busy talking about smart cities, but people don't even have cell phones in some cases, smartphones. Thank you so much for that question, Zipiso. Um, first and foremost, uh, academic institutions um, are not the monuments of elite. They particularly exist to solve societal challenges, working together with our government, working together with our industry. Then how do we break it down this, uh, to the level of the society? And 
the, we, we, we always speak of quadruple helix, meaning um, the society, government, industry, and academia working together. Uh, our pursuit in all of this work um, is, is not for us to deploy these AI technologies in isolation or exclusively or um, in the absence of our society. We are already, as an as, 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 as institution, working very closely with uh, SMMEs. We are already working very closely with our society. As you know, the, the role of any university is teaching and learning, that's number one. Number two is research and innovation. Number three is community engagement. Therefore, any project that is taking place in any university, it needs to find resonance uh, in the communities through this third leg of community engagement. So in uh, the similar way, we are already working with our communities uh, through our projects um, uh, under the leg of community engagement. Uh, it is the case even with these particular projects. By the way, um, uh, as, as the Vice Chancellor mentioned when he was making a speech there, that some of these projects are already at the advanced stage. We are not starting them now. And some of them are already closer to proof of concept. So we have already been working with our communities. We take example, uh, the project um, on um, a use of AI in, in agriculture. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, benefits that are being drawn as we speak uh, by our communities. Uh, if you look at Ubuntu Basket, it's one of the projects uh, that were displayed yesterday. Um, uh, where use of AI is being deployed to assist our own communities to ensure then that they are even in, in a position to price very well. So to answer your question as to how do we then bridge the gap uh, between those who do not have okay. um, as, as far as digital, digitalization is concerned and ourselves as academic institutions, we are already uh, uh, employing this quadruple um, uh, 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 helix as I've just mentioned. Okay. Thanks. Dr. Zamkwaka, may I ask you to be brief on this question because it's an important one. We have run out of time, but I would like to ask it, particularly how the youth can benefit from this. We know that um, uh, digitization, although it aims for social change, it does create disruption in terms of uh, business systems. So how do we groom our children to be able to take advantage of this, to be at the forefront of this, uh, to be represented at these high levels where they can come up with, you know, uh, the design and implementation of some of these policies. Thank you so much, Sabiso. Well, I like that question because one of our strategies as a university is to produce future ready graduates. So if we're talking about the youth, the youth is, is going through um, uh, the education system, including the higher education system. Uh, and when they arrive at, at the higher education system and they find us uh, being aligned in terms of our teaching and learning and uh, the research innovation that we are implementing as far as uh, the issues of AIs and other AI technologies, preparing them for future of work, then in that way we would have solved the bigger problem. We would have dealt with the cohort that is coming up to ensure that they are ready for the future of work. So to answer the question of how you benefit from this, um, it, is, it, it is very strategic that um, uh, these particular initiatives are put or are placed in academic institutions, particularly because academic, academic institutions, that's where our youth is at. We find youth in academic institutions and, and therefore if our pedagogy, our research and innovation um, that we do in universities is really aligned to the future of work, then it benefits our youth. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the University of Technology, Twani University of Technology, Dr. Vatiswa Papu Zamkwaga, speaking to us about that summit there, the role of digitization in economic growth and social change. We're going to take a quick break. Do you stay with us. This is the latest edition of the news.